Anybody seen this video before? No. It's on YouTube. So, uh, feedback on that. In business school, we studied something similar, similar about interest rates. But yeah, really compounding cool. interest. And, and, and yeah. software, it's, it's like algorithms, right? So yeah. if you're, uh, I mean, it's, it's like an, an adaptation of a factorial, but yeah. Yeah, really, this, this is what considers linear, you come look at everything, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, all the, the interest rate thing, um, all kidding aside, it's the time value of money curve. It's exactly that. Why? Interest becomes principal that earns interest. Disciples make disciples who make disciples. It's exactly the same concept. Yeah. In the, in the uh, I think it was in the Lausanne conference on the transfer, in Spilkey, there was like 15,000 people. And the, the uh, who was speaking asked whoever came to Christ at, from Billy Graham or Evangelist. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, some people stood up. And then they, they said, who came to Christ from somebody, a lay, uh, a lay person from right. the place? The whole place stood up. Yeah. That's where that people come to Jesus. Right, yeah, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I think that it's church is good. People should go to church, but you know, the Bible doesn't talk about church really. I mean, church is sort of a man-made thing that happened after Jesus, and it's, it's a uh, it's a uh, maybe efficient way to, to gather. But um, yeah, the best way to get an idea to go viral is word of mouth and by handpicking people that you want to get the message to that will get the message to other people. Yeah. Yeah, and it's this life on life approach. You know, it's it's coming along. And uh, you know, you don't have to reach the whole world. You don't have to reach all of Silicon Valley. In fact, you can't, even if you try. But um, who's, who's parents in the house? And clearly, I can raise my hand. <laughs> so, uh, any of you, any grandparents in the house? All right. For those parents who are not parents, who would like to be parents? Okay. For those parents who are not grandparents, who would like to be a grandparent one day. Yep. <laughs> so we, we organize our lives and we invest so much in, in our children for them to be fruitful, for them to be successful and also to have a family of their own one day and to have kids and for them to be grandkids. I'm just wondering why when it comes to spiritual kids we don't have the same goals. Um, so many, and I, I, I do talks like this a lot, and sometimes I ask people, you know, to raise their hand if they disciple someone. Especially that kind of looks a little bit like the Great Commission, those elements. And then I ask them, you know, who do you know that your disciple is also discipling someone else? And there's not a lot of many hands that, that, that raise that they actually are discipling someone. And then there's hardly any hands that go down when they who do, who do you know that your disciple is replicating in someone else? And when, if we use the Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.2, who do you know that your disciple's disciple is also discipling someone else? There's usually not a hand left in the room. So I think part of I'm making a big case for multiplication, uh, going along with the challenge Dustin has given us, because we all care for this Bay Area. And we know that this Bay Area is so strategic. Literally, the nations of the world has come to live in this, this place called Silicon Valley. And I think we have a unique opportunity to obey the Great Commission, to see the Great Commission fulfilled here. Um, I want to leave you guys with a little assignment. So, um, I was told the gloves are coming off. Can someone just give these Harry? Whoop. Okay. Can you give these out? So, just want us to look at if if one of the most important assignments Jesus gave his followers is to go make disciples of all nations 
to uh, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to teach them to obey everything He has commanded them, and to also surely know that He is with us to the very end of the age. Um, like it's just to, I've identified, you know, as we, we hit all those points, there's about eight main principles, main aspects of, of the Great Commission. So according to the Great Commission, um, just evaluate, you know, in all authority, in the last 12 months, am I giving more and more authority over to Jesus, over my actions, time and resources? Or am I slowly retaking authority from Jesus in some parts of my actions, time and resources? So, what describes you best? Now, I know we all have good days and bad days. So, look at the, over the last 12 months, the last year, you know, are you growing in this area or, or is this an area that that uh, you're going backwards a little bit. So just circle one or zero in each of these points and in the end you can just add up. I'm not gonna ask you to share your, uh, your score, it's not a competition. And then there's just some, some reflection questions on that in the bottom. Just want us to have a picture of what it means to even disciple when you have a person of peace. So kind of like have that clear picture. And then, and then we'll, we'll definitely look at person of peace We'll look at also the process of the Discovery Bible Group process. So what does that look like um, hands-on when you find a person at peace to kind of um, start to disciple them? That these principles then are baked in into the process actually from day one. So to start the way you want to finish. So it's 8.14, almost 8.15. I know some of you um, have to head to the, to the doors. Um, Take that with you, and um, I think it's just healthy every now and again just to just to assess and to um, to look at you know what are some of the areas you know we need to work and we need to grow in. Um, our goal is to also launch a, a a a a learning community, a supportive community from from this group. You know the weightlifters. Yeah. There's going to be some hot tubbers. And, and but uh, we want to we want to get some get a workout a great commission workout group together where we're going to help one another you know some of these areas I think to fulfill the great commission in, in any area is not a job of just one person it's best accomplished in a team we have different gifts we have different abilities and um, working together as a team is absolutely critical um, we don't want this just to be a flash in the pan and for, for order to really have sustainability and raise up the leaders from the harvest to see it multiply that's very much a team a team approach so um, that want to be part of a a group that's like man you know what I'm gonna grow I'm gonna I'm also gonna grow I'm also gonna help other my brothers grow you know in some of these areas I'm gifted in some but I need help in others so we're going to start to start to work together as a team to see the Great Commission fulfilled here in Silicon Valley. Because this place, God is doing something really, really special. And um, I think we just need to redefine a little bit disciple. We need to redefine evangelism. We need to redefine obedience. Obedience got a bad rap. We got to redefine even prayer. And I think we have to redefine and get a new paradigm of what does it mean to, to be the church and to see churches emerge. So that's not going to be accomplished in one, one hour or even in three sessions. So we're going to journey together. And in that process, I believe God's going to use us. And we're going to start seeing some things that kind of start looking like Acts 19. I think what happens in Cuba is not just isolated. City team is now seeing movements like that in 70 different countries, 50 different countries? Uh, 52 countries, 96 movements, uh, with the definition of at least 100 new churches multiplied to three generations. I don't think God has any favorites. I don't think God likes Cuba, the Cubans, more than he loves the people in the Bay Area. Scripture says he doesn't have favorites. Uh, exactly. So, um, yes, sir. So, when you talk about redefining these things, evangelism, obedience, prayer, 
um, so forth. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time. Yeah. My question would be say more about that, but perhaps I should say, uh, are, 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 you, uh, are you saying that we don't have a proper uh, kingdom perspective or biblical yeah. perspective about these uh, terms or activities? What would you guys say? When I say we have, uh, I'm talking about kind of like the church in general. Uh-huh. What would you say to oh, that question? Yeah, I, mean, I guess I'd say if, if we learned something here today, then we didn't quite have an accurate perspective before today. I think we need more entertainment at church. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think we need to have more entertainment in, in NCS. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I, I think we've become, in the West, to take it back to a serious note, I, I think we've become obsessed with this notion of creating believers. But that was not the charge. The charge was, was to create disciples. Um, but I think that's why we see a weak church in the West. That's why you go to places like Africa and you see like physical manifestations of the Holy Spirit. When I went to Africa, I got healed. Uh, I've got a beautiful family now. And, uh, you know, we don't, we don't see that as often here. But I think it's because you know, we don't have that level of faith, right? And we also, well, we, we've kind of created this version of Christian life where it's this convenient place. Church is a convenient place you go on Sundays. Church is, is the collective body of believers who follow Jesus, who are in Christ. Um, and I think if we want to see richness, uh, We've got to be in alignment with God's word. Jesus says that He's divine and we're the branches, and apart from Him we can bear no fruit. And that the Father is the vine dresser. So just expect that you're going to get pruned some guys. It's not. It's not always going to be easy. It's not always roses. But uh, but that's what produces endurance. That's what produces fruit. So I think this is a fantastic uh, first step, and, and I really appreciate it, Hermie. Um, you know, the thing that I've been getting convicted of for about the last month and a half, I haven't baptized anyone with water. I mean, I've prayed for a baptism of the Holy Spirit over people, but I haven't baptized anyone in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's right here. You know, I don't know if he's saying specifically it has to be a baptism of water, right? There's a baptism of water and a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but it, it's a good conviction. And, uh, yeah. Appreciate that. Hurry, uh, just... On, uh, yeah, you know, I guess coming up on the next episode of Hermie. Um, so, first of all, I think that um, disciple making movements are all about inviting other people to be part of this. So, if um, if you guys are like, wow, I, I know somebody that is kind of curious about this, I think they can come to the next session and we can do a little on the last episode of Hermie and, and give a little quick recap and then, and then move We on. also recorded this, so uh, yeah. are we going to make that available? Yeah, we are. We are. So if, if someone's like, man, you know, just get, get caught up. Uh, if you have time, listen to this. Uh, I'll edit it a little bit, make it a little bit easier. And, uh, but yeah, we'll make that available also. I'm not going to say perfected. <laughs> uh, um, and I also will say that unit cost by itself isn't the end of the story. But for, for the Great Commission to be true, it, it has to be able to be affordable. And right now, the propagation of the gospel is not for 5 billion people. So, Tom, to your point, uh, right now, by, this is by God's grace. It's the story of God's glory. We're, we're seeing, on average, 10.6 new churches per day with 282 new followers of Jesus per day. And the unit cost on that is $604 for each church and $23 per new disciple. That is downstream of a lot of this stuff where it starts with one and then it multiplies as people are training other people who train other people. That's why the unit cost drops is it's not professionals who are doing it. It's, it's ordinary people who are doing it in their natural networks. We wind up being the coaches and the catalysts and the course correctors because things drift. But when that happens, it's happening um, so it can scale, maintain its quality, keep the cost down, stay simple, stay natural, whatever. So that's the journey that can start today. Each of you have your own natural network. 
whoever you talk to is going to be green as grass and not know anything. It starts over with them, but once they get it, they can do it with the next guy just the same. Cool. Good. You want to like us close this in a word of prayer?